You'll note that when we're talking about programming, there's really these sort of two ideas happening. One is we're looking at what's the essential problem? Like what's the, what's the core thing that we're trying to do? What's the big idea? What's the, what's the real need? Uh, but then there's a whole bunch of specifics, right? And so we're trying to get both of those things, that the idea of the scale and what are the opportunity? Does the scale of what we're, the number of people, can we use test fits or something to sort of check that and check the data? Uh, you know, we're going through and looking at all these very, very specific sets of issues in order to really sort of test out, uh, is this the right spot? Is this the right idea? Is this the right thing for this particular situation on this particular site? And so we're looking at that big scale, the big idea, big concept, as well as these really specific sets of issues. So because of that, the program has a tendency to sort of fall into these big categories. So you, you have goals that are written like goals. They're very uh, open-ended and, and sort of directive in a sort of aspirational sense. But then the data analysis should be very, very specific so that you really have clear directives and understandings. There's no point in going through the data and then not saying what you want people to use from that uh, analysis. You have to actually go through it and be directive and say, you know, this uh, department wants to be next to that and there should be direct communication. Uh, something along those lines has to be said, otherwise the next group of people who are doing the designing don't know, they don't understand that. So it has to sort of hit these sort of large scale ideas, these big conceptual ideas, as well as all this detail. And that detail is going to sort of fall into these different phases. So we have the general phase, we have a needs phase, and then it moves from needs into details. So you're kind of uh, moving through what's the big idea, what are the needs, i.e. how much space, uh, what are the relationships, those kinds of things, into detail. Okay, this one is literally next to this one, but can see this other one, right? So you start getting beyond just what are the needs, and now we're actually getting, you know, really into the detail of how it's all going to sort of string together. Uh, and, you know, the, you're not talking about just sort of general scale, but you're saying, yes, we've actually tested it, and we actually understand this is going to be 500 desks, you know, that kind of thing. So you're going through this kind of in a phased way, and then you get back to that spot where you then go back to the essential problem. And in that process, we're going to talk about issues that are function issues. How will things literally function? So I have uh, a meeting with the administrators. Where does that meeting take place? Okay, is there a conference room? Is there uh, some other kind of space? Do we do it out in the open? Do we need to have privacy? Uh, you know, the sort of function of things has to be understood. Uh, it can't be that you get through the programming process and you don't really understand how uh, that entity works or how people uh, in this housing project are, are going to be living, like what's the intent of how they're going to be living. Because uh, understanding that set of functionality becomes really important because it becomes a driver of the design. From that, there may be sort of form aspects to things. Now, I'm going to be a little careful. I'm going to come back to this one in a minute. Um, form does not, in this context, does not necessarily mean coming up with a design. It might mean uh, sort of the idea of hierarchy or the thoughts of uh, the sort of general ideas about uh, uh, kind of branded experience or uh, kind of moving through a space. Like, what are the what does it feel like? Um, efficiency, time. Uh, you know, how these things are, uh, what can save time, what can be make things more efficient uh, for whatever it is we're designing for. Um, those are all going to be the kind of the topics that will show up as these sort of detail elements that we start going through in this program form. All right, here's the big trick one. I've already mentioned it once. We're going to end up saying this literally five or six times as we go through this because it's so not normal for architects. Uh, when you're a designer, you sort of think of everything as an opportunity for design. You are specifically not designing during programming. Uh, the whole point here is you're doing uh, analysis of data and interviewing people and doing uh, sort of s ways of gathering information. And if you start designing before you've gathered all the information, you are effectively closing your ears to hearing the information in a real way. If you sort of have in your head and the project comes forward and let's say it's, it's going to be a bank on the you know, Main Street and uh, Wood Street, 
And you're like, oh, that's great. Main Street, wow, it'd be really great if it was all glass and maybe it would you know, have a sort of sense of transparency. Like if you're starting your thoughts that way, then when you start to talk to folks or look at the data or look at the situation that's leading you away from glass, it's really hard to hear it or to see it because you've already said in your brain, it's gonna be glass. Uh, so you've already started designing and what that means is you're not really programming. So the whole point here is you're not designing, you don't get to the design until after the programming phase. There's a lot of stuff that's sort of like design. So we were just talking a second ago about the idea of kind of thinking about form. Well, that's kind of like design, but it's not the same thing as design, right? You're not actually saying, here's the room, this is the material, this is the, you're saying, here's a essence, here's an idea, here's a concept, right? That they, they are uh, open to interpretation still. Uh, and that's a kind of key understanding about programming. Uh, it is quite likely to show up on uh, an exam like this in some way. That there'll be some very large scenario, you kind of get to the end of that scenario, and uh, it's the whole point that you're supposed to have understood is, well, yeah, but we shouldn't be designing yet because we we're not done with the program. So the next big aspect of this is when it really comes down to it, the program is actually about communication. This is a tool about how to, the client can tell the architect uh, what the project is and equally the banker now knows what the project is and the GC can if there's a, a, a setup where they're involved early in for pricing or the construction manager or somebody they can all understand what the project is like this is a tool for discussion it is not something that sort of lives on its own or it's not something that just goes into a file like the whole point is that it's a tool of discussion so uh, if it's not providing clear communication, then it's not being an effective tool. So it needs to be uh, written in such a way and uh, drawn in such a way that it's uh, clearly communicating all the aspects that are important for it to get across. For a great big complicated project, uh, the program might be uh, you know, kind of like a little book. Uh, it could be many, many pages long. Uh, it could have, uh, you know, a table of contents and a whole series of different uh, uh, sections and chapters and all of that. For a smaller project, it could be, you know, maybe it's a page long and it just says, you know, we need this many rooms, we want this kind of effect, we want to have this kind of, uh, you know, impact on the community. There you go. Uh, so the scale of it depends on the type of the project. Uh, depends on who the audience is. Uh, it may be that the owner or the client uh, is very conversant with the material and feels very comfortable. It may be that they are not so conversant and comfortable with the material. And so it's really about uh, making sure that both the architect and the owner are, are speaking the same language. Um, but in many situations, this is a key contractual element, right? When you're signing a contract to do the architectural drawings for somebody, you're signing it based on the idea of what this program says. So typically, uh, contractually, it's actually not the architect's role to write it, but often architects end up writing parts of it at least or helping rewrite it or something. But it's an important contractual element. It's the thing that says this is a big project or this is a, a subtle, small project. It's the device that is uh, going to be, if anything goes wrong, we're all going to go back to to say, well, did you meet the program or not? Uh, and so it has big impact and it should be very useful for everyone. So it can't be useful if it's not a clear and well communicated document. Part of that process is the owner should absolutely literally sign off on it. Put their signature on there so that they are saying, yes, this is the program. This is the contract that I want to sign with you. This is the document that tells uh, the effect that we are looking for, the scale that we're looking for, the budget that we're looking for, the goals that we have, here's that document, right? If you write a program and they don't do that, then there's sort of always an opportunity that they just don't absorb it, they don't assimilate that information. Uh, and so they don't have that same sense of ownership, if you will, of that information. This has to be a two-way, in fact, actually more than two-way, there's lots of different players involved, but let's say two-way street of information going back and forth, and uh, that's the whole point. Is you're creating this document that is a tool for that specific communication moment.